Hey Legionnaires, and welcome back. We're here with another Dawnless Day Siege Battle for you today, and today we have a 2v2 here, and you might be thinking, Pope, oh, why on earth do we have sort of like a Helming Gas here with the banners of uh, Erebor well behind, and it's not because Erebor and Rohan are here uh, like in t as two different separate forces. They are here as one force themselves. We do have the uh, the realm of Aglarond here as a uh, faction. We have a fourth age seed feud today in uh, Dawnless Day's Total War. So yes, a little while ago, a couple of weeks ago, I did show off the uh, the mod or the sub mod. Um, the, uh, the new shadow, which is set in the fourth age, and it does uh, have some new factions in it. It does have uh, Aglarond as a new one. It has a Thillion, and, it's sort of, and uh, it does have um, an evil faction, which name's escaping me off the top of my head now. I can't remember what they're, uh, they're called. They might just be called the new shadow. I can't really remember um, what they're called. But uh, yeah, Aglarond is sort of like the, the uh, dwarven realm that's set up by Gimli uh, in Helm's Deep in the, in the sort of like in the crystal me? caves by... Um, by uh, Helm's Deep, and we do have Gimli here actually as the general. Um, but yeah, they're kind of like sort of associated with uh, with Rohan, of course, because um, obviously they needed permission to Gimli did from uh, King Aemir at that point to make uh, the Crystal Caves, and he does get permission, and yeah, they do get to set him up. And I guess because they're like sort of associated with uh, Rohan, they do get the Helm and Gas as a uh, unit available, which is kind of cool. Dwarves with Potentially Rohirrim uh, Cavalry is very, very cool, that's for sure. Equipment. And it does look like they're landing actually quite a lot over here. We do have Tunnel Guards of Aglaron landing. Um, but yeah, we do, and they are being joined in today's battle by uh, Gondor. And then I think on the defense, we actually do have Erebor and we do have Dale. So Erebor and Dale, you know, they've got a good, strong relationship. But maybe, you know, Aglaron, maybe Gimli's turned against um, Erebor in this sort of like weird scenario and he's marching on sort of like on Erebor. I don't really know. I mean, Gondor should really be holding this city. It's a very Gondorian city. I think it is Anunaland, which is a uh, Gondorian city. Um, so yeah. But like sort of like for, for lore and context of the siege, who really knows? But it's cool to see Aglarond in a uh, in the siege battle. And it's nice to see a different submod shown off. If you haven't checked out the new Shadow submod and you want to do so, if you want to go and check out the new fourth, fourth age sort of submod, and the factions and units there, then uh, I'll leave a link for it in the description. Uh, I'll leave a link for the mod in the description. Um, along with, obviously, Dawnless Days and my Discord as well, if you ever wanted to get involved in any uh, Dawnless Days replays, or send in some of your own Lord of the Rings replays uh, to have them featured on the channel. I'm always looking for more Dawnless Days content, and you guys seem to love it. You can't get enough of it. So, yeah, if you do have any more, do feel free to send them in. It looks like, yeah, we have lots of warriors of uh, Loznog being brought by uh, Gondor in this one, and they're landing those guys on the wall. Uh, looks like, I don't think Gondor's anything new. I think uh, none of the base game factions have anything altered. They're just the same factions that they are from base game. It is just uh, sort of new factions that have been added. We've got Founder Guards as well in this one. It's sort of like Gondor Swords, Black Root Veil Archers. The typical sort of stuff you're used to seeing, really, from Gondor. And a fair bit of Cav, uh, actually, Prince Sergeants. And also Knights of the Silver Swan. So maybe they were worried that Dale was going to sally. I mean, they do have a, a, a Ravanian region general, but they haven't brought any cab to sally with. Uh, that's for sure. And it does seem as though both sides are uh, playing it passive. Um, though I think we are about to see an assault maybe from Agler on the uh, sending forward Dwarven Explorers. Tier 1 Axe Infantry. They do have um, like javelin capability, which I imagine is throwing axes. And they're going to go in against the Dalian Swords. I don't think they're going to be able to beat them. But whether they're just here to use their, their axes, which might be the case. We'll see how many kills they can get. Uh, they're trying to throw, I don't know what they're trying to throw them at. I mean, they should just have them an auto-fire. They shouldn't do anything more than that. We've got Iron Kin, which is a tier 4 sword unit behind. It's basically an Iron Guard without uh, a spear, but with, instead of with a sword. There you go, the, uh, the axes. Dalian Swords are losing about 7 guys there, and they're dropping a little bit more as well. And yeah, using about half their ammo, so they'll probably get another volley off here. Yeah, I mean, they killed like a good 20. They're probably going to get there. So that's not a bad sort of result there for a tier 1 uh, axe infantry, you know, going against tier 3. They're probably not going to get many more kills. Probably good as a flanking force, but yeah, definitely not too bad to start with. And Gondol's already getting focused down. Gondol's trying to do the same thing, but with his Pelican Marines. But his uh, uh, Warriors of Loznark already getting focused down by Erebor Crossbows. Uh, and crossbows can arc now in Dawn's Day, so that is a danger. And you can see here, actually, Erebor's forming a uh, shield wall with his Iron Guard. So that's going to make these uh, these Marines pretty much ineffective with their jabbies. I mean, literally, yeah, they've killed one dwarf. Maybe they'll get it. They got two. 
Wow, that's a pretty good hold. Yeah, it's a pretty big waste there of javelins. I just kind of expect to already look at that. The uh, dwarves have instead uh, inflicted a lot of losses, already killing nearly half of that unit, really. And, I mean, the marines have also lost a fair amount. So, yeah, a lot of losses there for, for Gondor. Now they're going to send in the uh, the shock of Drew up against the spears. Shock infantry does typically, you know, excel against spears, but... Um, I don't know about these spears. These are tier 4 dwarven spears with armor as thick as your arm. And these are some of the weakest shock infantry in the game, really. Gondor's weakness is shock. Uh, these warriors of Loznark, yeah, are not to be admired. And it just seems that Pelican Marines are going in as well. Again, these Iron Guards, I think, will hold them at bay. These guys fight pretty much the last man. They got a, bit, a few more kills to the uh, shock infantry on the charge, I think. But yeah, these Iron Guards, they'll hold to pretty much yeah, the last dwarf and uh, they won't budge an inch. Uh, over here, looks like the same thing going on. Dwarven Explorers throwing their, uh, their javis, trying to inflict some losses. I don't know onto who, but they have used some ammo up. And they're fighting on the walls well here. More Dwarven Explorers firing. They are actually uh, fighting. They're firing whilst in melee as well, which is a bit cheeky. You get point blank shots, and you pretty much get instant kills, these guys. Um, but it doesn't seem like it's making much of a difference. These Dwarven Explorers have only lost one Dwarf. They might lose more now because they're uh, having a few issues, I think, with pathfinding as they try and retreat the daily and troops will probably cut down a fair amount of those dwarves, but we'll see. Uh, the cav coming in, though, could be uh, a pretty good asset here for the attackers. So they can get cycle charges with the cav on uh, spots where there's just swords. I mean, like here, for instance, it's a, a daily and sword defending the choke point. Just charge your cav and just see whether the daily player will fall back or whether he'll send up more spears as try and uh, make it a, a defensive position. Yeah, the Iron Guards here, winning. They've only lost like another five men since we last checked in on them. Five dwarves, I should say. And yeah, already the shock is breaking. That is not great at all. And yeah, the, as I expect, the Prince Sergeant's coming into this corner of the, uh, the city here. I imagine we're going to see the Tunnel Guards of Aglaron fall back. And then we're going to see a charge in a moment from Prince's Sergeants. They're uh, the lowest tier, the tier two um, shock cab, or actually a spear cab, yeah, for Gondor. He's going to form wedge formation. This reeks all of a, uh, of a, uh, like, a, yeah, a charge here. And here we go, in they go. I'll watch this take place. The, the officer at the front leading the way, and there, actually, the sword help well. They've been in an established shield wall. And uh, I imagine they'll take some losses. They might start to lose. Maybe not combat even, lives. you know. They took, you know, very few losses. Less than 15 losses. And the Cavs, you know, lost eight riders, nine, ten. Yeah, they're going to take a fair few losses. And also HP as well. So, yeah, not a great charge at all. And, uh, yeah, did not really work at all with uh, what they had it in mind. But they've got shipment as well for the... Um, the Dale now available, and it makes Dale much more effective that shipmen uh, have their javies again, which I'm a big fan of, um, because, you know, it makes them an effective uh, sword unit. But also, you can spam with the shipmen now, and you can really um, use them to great effect in a siege battle. Yeah, the explorers here, they're not going to break through. Well, I don't know, winning decisively. I don't know how well balanced these uh, fourth age units are. I mean, I don't know how many they killed from the Javi volley. They killed a good like 20 or so, I think we looked. Maybe a bit more. I don't know, we'll have to see. Dwarven Explorers for a tier one light axe infantry seem to have taken very few losses facing the uh, the Dalian Swords, but we'll see how this uh, how it continues, whether other fights, maybe Dale will, um, sorry, the uh, the Dwarves might struggle. Obviously the Helming Gas, I don't think are gonna have been changed. They are down as a mounted unit. I've just realized. I don't know why they're uh, mounted oh, yet. Yeah, technically, they're a bow unit. Oh, Absolutely. I don't know why they're uh, why that's the case. Whether that's a mistake from the mod, from like the the mod. I don't think it's in a, it's a case in the in the main mod that they're uh, mounted unit. But they are focusing down these iron guard here. They're doing some good damage to them. Uh, we got the uh, arbalest of Aglor on there. They're focusing these guys down. And then be the helming gas behind. Looks like they're. What are they shooting at? It looks like they're shooting into the side, uh, the backs of these uh, iron guards. They've been seeming to have incredible range. That is, to hit that. I mean, maybe that's average range. I'm not sure, but it seems like a long, long way. But at least trying to help out their Gondorian ally, which is good of Aglaron. Gimli, you know, maybe yeah, maybe he wants to just conquer Erebor himself. Maybe you know, 
have to be from Erebor, he wants to conquer his own, his own land, bring them under his Aglaron realm. Maybe that's some sort of weird context for the siege. I don't know. I feel like Erebor, though, kind of like uh, most of the Dwarven Kingdom started to disappear. I feel like Aglaron's kind of like the only one that saw it really mentioned in the Fourth Age. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a cool, it's a cool somewhat. I'm kind of excited to see uh, where they go with it. Whether, it, like, if obviously if a, like a base game campaign comes out for, uh, is coming out for TDD, whether we see like a Fourth Age well. one set up, because it wouldn't be hard to change, because you won't have to change the map. Um, you just have to change maybe some, like where the factions are, maybe some different cities. Um, but yeah, it'd be very cool to see. That was for sure, like a fourth age sort of like uh, campaign. Iron Guards here have been focused down, by the way. They haven't lost, they haven't fought a single man. I'd charge those Gondorians this one. They're a fairly aggressive spear unit. You can uh, be aggressive with them as well as um, defensive with these guys. They'll do, they'll do work, but maybe I guess the, the Forge Wardens behind maybe are scaring them off. Maybe some archer ammo is needed over here. I mean, we've got some crossbows. Uh, being uh, used now. It looks like uh, Erebor crossbows to shoot down those Forge Wardens. Um, but yeah, they could definitely do it maybe using a bit more of their, uh, their own uh, Archer force here maybe to try and nullify the, the Arbalest of Aglarond out there, try and get rid of them. Because uh, it does seem like they're having a lot of joy. And these Iron Guards here are starting to lose. I think that is because of the uh, side shots taking place. Uh, that seems like it's coming in from the Helmet Gas, not the Arblast. Men run from the enemy. This is shameful. And yeah, it looks like looks like your yeah, Pergamon Marines breaking a fresh Warriors of Lost Marks have to go in. And we might be about to see Iron Kin fight against the Iron Guard. So a lot of Iron Dwarves fighting in a moment very shortly. Uh, no rush here from Gondor to go across that bridge and try and push over there. Uh, just, I guess maybe it could be a play. Um, absolutely. I mean, whether um, the attackers, if they wanted to do it, they could be aggressive um, going across here. They could also send out a cav unit to sort of watch that gate and also put their own archers here so they could side shot that uh, watch post sentry. I mean, it's only a watch post sentry. You could probably kill it off with a sword unit anyway. But they could potentially push across this bridge and come around the other side and put more pressure on the defenders there because uh, the more choke points you threaten, uh, the easier it is, obviously, open up a, uh, a breach somewhere in the line for the defenders because typically attackers have more men. Uh, or more like troops than a defender. I mean, in this case, yeah, there's 4,400 against 3,200. If you attack more tro as many choke points as possible, the defenders aren't going to be able to defend them all well. They can't stack up units. I mean, they're helping out are the attackers in a way, uh, only slightly, you know. I mean, they, they could obviously still grind their way through this force uh, as if it carries on how it kind of is going at the moment. Um, they are being attacked just on one side of the attackers. Uh, sorry, the defenders. Uh, but if they were to attack from the other side across this bridge, I mean, it's another tough choke point to come across here. But it at least stretch and force the defenders to put troops there. Then you could argue, of course, it forces the attackers to keep people there. Uh, and Dwarven Explorers are losing here. So evidently, they, I'd say they're fairly balanced, it looks like it seems. Dwarven Explorers seem like they're fairly well balanced. They're losing to this Dalian Swords. Maybe that one over there, they were just... Had some luck with with all the Jarries and maybe the Arch Fire, but yeah, Dalian Swords are now losing again. Uh, sorry, we're now winning against uh, Dalian Ex um, uh, Dalian Swords beating Dwarven Explorers. That's what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say and struggling apparently. So yeah, I'd say they, they look seem like they're quite balanced. The, the sub mod, which is good. It's always a worry when you play uh, with a sub mod and uh, with main mod factions. So sometimes aren't always balanced. Like what Wayne Riders isn't, but it's designed like that, so it's meant to be. Lot, not balanced and not meant to be played with a uh, base, base game uh, faction. But I guess maybe maybe they do want to play these uh, with. Obviously, if they were to, yeah, to do a campaign, I guess Gondor would have to be there. I mean, and I guess it would be a United Realm, reunited Realm of Arnor and Gondor, which would be fun to see. Uh, Shipman coming forward, so the Javis are being employed. Whether it's going to Javi all their Iron Guard uh, colleagues down, I don't know. Let's see. So yeah, here go the Javis. They're going to just, I guess, focus down on these Pergamon Marines. Try and focus the Warriors of Loznark as well. They break the I'm Marines. Uh, these Iron Guard have held less, uh, like, a lot less than I expected they were going to. I mean, obviously they are just kind of getting focused down. But I really thought these guys were going to be here a lot longer. But the, uh, the Archers have shortened their lifespan by quite a lot. And there you go, there's there. Uh, these Iron Guards are going to be defeated. But the Shipmen will be able to go in soon once they're out of ammo. And they... There you go. I got fine to 10 men. And actually outdoing the Warriors of Loznark. 
I think they try to pull through, which is their undoing. And that broken with the air. The Iron Guard's down a 10 out of 100 and still holding. What champs they really are. And uh, yeah, the shipmen use all their ammo and then they can now go into the Gondor Swords there, which they'll have to do if they want to uh, hold on to that choke point. And uh, yeah, again, looks like the first sort of waves in quite a few areas here. All the attackers are breaking. The Dwarven Explorers going. I've seen Tunnel Guards go in uh, as well in spots. And it looks like, uh, yeah, the Forge Wardens as well being thrown in here at Polarm. So it doesn't seem like it's in Polarm formation at all. On the Swords has been stuck in against some of the uh, Erebor Axe Warriors here. They should hold for a fair amount of time. Those Erebor Axe Warriors are definitely superior to any of uh, the Gondor Tier 3 stuff, I'd say. So we'll see how they do. Uh, but yeah, Tunnel Guards of Aglon, only Tier 2, but I think they're kind of supposed to be on like comparison maybe with the Erebor Axe Warriors. They're like the main, main line uh, Axe Infantry, I think. Might be wrong. I think that is kind of like what they are supposed to be. They look very similar to the Erebor Axe uh, Warriors, as you can see here. At a glance, you think they are, but they're not. I would like to see Agron get new banners. I don't know that they have Erebor banners. I'm not a big fan of that. I know Gimli is, like, you know, from Erebor, but he would have designed his own banner, I'm sure. I'd like to see, like, the Agron. Like, if you look at the units, they have their own one over here. The cross axe, it looks like, with a mountain below. Why we can't have that, I don't know. That would be what I'd like to see. These are small details added to the mod. Battling on here. They will be very confused, I'm sure, fighting dwarves. Like, I thought these guys were our friends. No, these are the evil dwarves, apparently. Or, I don't know, maybe Dale has turned evil. I mean, really, it's a fight. Evil's gone. It's just a fight between good and good. There you go, they're fighting on there. Yeah, two tunnel guards uh, holding the, the fighting in that line there. They're going to have to send something else forward to, is, to help this Dalian Sword. It is starting to lose. They have more Dalian Swords on the wall. Whether they're going to... I wonder if they're going to come off the wall here and try and encircle them. It's a bit of a risk, and it looks like there's more tunnel guards getting ready to try and stop it. And there's the Prince's Sergeants that could always stop it as well. Looks like we still have an Iron Guard in the front line here. Erebor really put all their elites in the front line from the start. I mean, I can understand it's big. It's a bit of a risk, because like, if you lose these guys, you've only got worse stuff to try and defend. And the defenders, uh, sorry, the attackers are going to keep setting forward better things. If the attackers never send forward their best stuff first. So it never looks good if the elites fail to break through, and then you've got to send in the cheap stuff. Always send in the cheap stuff first. Maybe uh, depending on waste stuff, like ammunition, or just infantry the, of their own to try and kill off your guys. But yeah, Erebor... Holding on it with at least one Iron Guard. The other one is down to nine out of 100. It's, like I said, these guys just hold forever. They're going to have to do something about this one. It's 91 left. Um, but what have we got at the back still? We've still got Violent Guards. We've got Dane as well. Some good elite stuff here. Daily Marksman. Do we have Bardsmen? No. Or Bardsmen Bardings? No. It doesn't seem like they have. Uh, yeah, all Daily Marksmen, which is probably the better idea. The cheaper, but still very effective option. Shipmen here are losing to uh, Gondor Swords. They are a tier two against a tier three. And also they're getting Archer support is uh, is Dale, which is why they're losing. I don't think Erebor should have pushed this maybe. I think maybe they should have defended here. Like sort of like uh, where I'm like, moving my cursor now. That might have been a better spot to defend. But I mean, anywhere you try and defend in these streets, there's going to be an angle against you with the uh, the arch fire, which is why I think an Anunlond you try and defend at the walls if possible I think it's a better option for you because once the attacks get inside the city and you uh, find these streets it's pretty hard to stop them from getting an angle and shooting into your ongoing combats like this like Dale can't do anything about this really like wherever he defends now inside he's just gonna get shot at until you get to the, like the very last uh, stand really where it's it's if you at that point you know it's uh, it's looking bad I'd, I'd be really li uh, liking to see as well if the defenders use their supply barrels. I can see there's one here for Erebor and there's one all the way back there as well for Dale. I'd like to see them use if they get an opportunity if it's uh, the, if it's not too much pressure. 
on the archers uh, and on the front line. I'd like to see them get, you know, use replenish their ammo. It's something that defenders always forget to do. Yeah, over on this north side, if we call it like north side there of this front line, the defenders doing really well. The south, not so great. Uh, and yeah, you can see this terrible axe is about to break here. They're still going to persist and send more uh, infantry forward. It's going to be shipment here going in. And it looks like dwar uh, Dwarven River Wards are uh, going to break through here. And actually, yeah, they're going to break through and the shipment are having to retreat. And they're being chased by Gondorian swords. And they're not going to be saved by their retreat. And actually, there's going to be another shipment unit here set up. They're going to throw their jabbies, looks like, into the river wards, and they do a good amount of damage to them as well. But yeah, the shipment here lives. breaking very, very shortly. 34 of them left. You can see, yeah, big push now going on here by the attackers, and this is probably the better spot to defend exactly where these shipment and violent guards are, though they can still get angles uh, with the Black Root Bale Arches where they are. They can probably still get an angle, and then probably from even outside the wall, they can still angle into the shipment line. So they're never safe for the defenders, like I said, never safe from that missile threat. Yeah, Gondor here fighting against his own kin, his own uh, man, well I was going to say manish kin. Not really right. I mean, I guess the Northmen and the, like wet, wet and like Numenors are not really kin, really. Uh, I mean, they vaguely are because they're both men, but they're not really kin at all. Um, Erebor crossbows firing in. I should help. I mean, that's the thing. Like the defenders need to just respond. If like if the attackers are going to do nice side shots, which they have been, then they should respond by doing side shots. Just side shot into this. Make it a battle of wills. Who's going to win? I mean, they, these Gondor swords should be shot down by uh, crossbows as well. Don't bother shooting the. Uh, the river wards, they're nearly gone anyway. And there you go, they are gone. Shoot the Yondel's Gondor swords, weaken these guys up, make it as difficult as possible to break through that shipment. You can't just watch on. I mean, that's a brilliant uh, sort of parapet there that you can shoot over the side and get some really easy kills into all this. And you can slowly funnel in troops uh, to try and uh, keep this, this choke point going, and then you just keep farming kills for the missiles. I mean, right now, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's any attacking archers here. I think this Black Root Vale archer is about to take over and do the job. Uh, just shooting into the side here. I mean, I get the uh, Gondor Archers up as well. You could have multiple units here shooting in. And also, the Helming Gas could probably be arcing over and helping shoot these uh, these units in the choke point here. But we'll see where they, uh, they do take part. Still, Erebor holds here. Erebor Axe Warriors and also the Iron Guard in here. Uh, Iron Guard are down to five, though. So as many of the axes do the work. But the Iron Guard are here, you know. Showing their experience. I can see like three of them there knelt down. They're like, hold! Hold wars of Erebor. This usurper. This traitor. Gimli is here to destroy it. Like, uh, so they, um, they'll be okay there for a while. These Erebor Axe Warriors are starting to get exhausted, and they are kind of outnumbered by a lot the of unit lower tier units. But enemy. numbers in the end might come into it, also, just even energies might come into it. Reserves over here for the attack is not looking great. They've got most of their axes committed. It looks like I'm going to send another one, another tunnel guard up onto this wall, which. I mean, it's a wall fight, which really benefits the defender because they can just mount up their archers and shoot into the flanks really easily. Uh, and that's what they should be doing. It looks like the Erebor crossbows here are focusing on the Arblast of Aglaron, which is also not a bad idea. Counter missile. It's always a great strategy in a siege battle um, because it's one of the worst ways to hurt a defender or an attacker is to have missile units uh, and just use them to sort of like focus down strong points. And it looks like we are seeing a push here. Founding Guard Arg also going across here. 110 elite guardsmen for Gondor now being pushed across here. And it looks like they're going to go into Phalanx again, ready to challenge this watch post sentry, which is pretty much militia, uh, glorified militia. And it's going to go up against the finest uh, warriors in uh, Gondor, probably, you could argue, bar the cavalry, I guess. And uh, looks like more dwarves going in. There's probably more river guards. 
or River Wars, I should say. Or River Guard. Keep flying in. And again, these river wards are losing. This is what they're going to keep doing. Those crosswords. Now they can arc. It's so useful. Daily marksman as well. Getting and chipping in. And yeah, immediately look at that river wards losing. They can keep this up. Can the um, can the defenders. Look at that already dropping down to 78, 76, 75. Yeah, that's pretty much a defunct river wards unit already. That is really good there. <laughs> Uh, from the defenders. They need to just keep that up. There's not many infantry units inside the wall that can be thrown forward. Iron Cairn uh, is, more Gond uh, is more Gondor infantry here. Pelagian Marines. Uh, they've got another pole arm here. There's a couple more um, units over here that can uh, be sent in. The Aglaron Stone Fists. They've still, still got to go in. Let's have a look at these guys. Yeah, it kind of look like uh, Mantra Claimers, but with a big old hammer. They do look very, very scary, though. And, uh, yeah, Gimli's obviously still got to be sent in. The Disciples of Gimli. Makes him sound like he's a bit of a cult. Um, but yeah, balance power, not too bad for the defenders, only about 400 in it. 400 men. Well, men and dwarves, I should say. Both sides, yeah. I, I also, yeah, realised both sides. I mean, I have had realised already, but yeah, it's like a, a perfect team for both sides. Both sides have, has a mannish faction, both sides the dwarvish faction. They're perfectly balanced, it is just going to, I guess in a way, down to skill. I'd say maybe Gondor is slightly better than Dale. Certainly in the siege aspect. Watch post centuries here. I'll lose into the founding guard. To be expected though, really. To be expected. Um, because the watch post centuries obviously can't get in range of the pole arms here. So yeah, they're just getting poked and prodded to death. Uh, and I guess eventually the founding guard will just progress rather than might come for this choke point here. Which if that is the case, then, uh, well... It's just another choke point that the defenders have got to use and defend. But it's easy dealt with if they just focus down the, uh, the pole arms. And I think we're going to see another charge here. Prince of Sergeants is setting up. I think they're going to go for another charge on these swords now that those axes are broken. But we'll see. I mean, they want to form a shield wall. Form shield wall with these shipmen, they give themselves a better chance. And also block the missiles of all those crosswords there of the Arbless of Ang Aglarond. Iron Guard here still battling away. Look what they're fighting. And they're forged war still fighting Forge Wardens as the pole arms for Aglarond. Very sad to see Dwarven a Dwarven Civil War. And there you go, yeah, another charge. And that was actually a really good charge. That's a better charge to summon the Prince's ship, uh, for the Prince's side it's onto the shipman. That's, yeah, got a good amount of these guys uh, killed. And they didn't form a shield war, which didn't help. Um, but he's got out, yeah, I mean, he only had 60 men left when he went in. Um, when he came out after the last charge. He lost another six there, so it's not a bad uh, return at all. This is not good at all. Uh, Violent Guard losing the Gondol Sword Infantry. Both fairly balanced in numbers, actually. Violent Guards have a slight advantage. Um, but yeah, they could do using more crossbow and archer ammo here just to try and help balance out, kill off some of these units. I mean, whether they're saving it for the Founding Guards, I'm not sure. But uh, shooting down the Founding Guards isn't the be-all and end-all. If you can kill other units, other supporting units around it, it uh, as a last assault unit, it can often be quite useless. Especially if you can outflank it. Bowen and Guard slowly plugging away over here. Still poking and prodding. Yeah, their winning here has gone all quite decisively. Prize, maybe the, the uh, general's not coming up so you can get in and uh, so start to race in, but maybe he knows that the defenders aren't going to try and defend that this side here of the settlement. Going to defend their own side there. It's not like they're doing a good job as well. 
I mean, 2,600 against 2,000. The gap has opened up a little bit here in favor of the attackers. Iron Guard still in here, still refusing to die. I just really hope this unit isn't both down killed that way. There you go. Iron Guard. Well, they, they go between combat even and winning. And the fine archers, which is going to help obviously their stats. The men are running. Stand and fight, damn you! More tunnel guards getting ready, and we've got Iron Kin, yeah, waiting in the wings. And they want to try and maybe pressurize here. The Iron Guard's still holding four out of a hundred. Now that's what I call a true warrior. These Iron Guards. They just don't give in. Looks like we've got Mantra Claimers in here for the Dwarves, actually. Yeah, Mantra Claimers for Erebor being thrown in against Iron Kin. Looks like both sides are fairly matched. Iron Kin may be slightly worse off to at it. Very ornate dwarven armor on show in this, uh, in this battle here. And here comes is that general? Yeah, Imre Hill's in the uh, in the building. He's just uh, been sent in. Whether he's just going in for safety, they have broken through over here. The watchpost sentries have finally buckled. It cost the uh, founding guard about twenty guardsmen, probably from archer towers. But now they can throw in over here. But it looks like the Reviling Regent General is going to be active. He's going to go back across the river. I guess maybe a threat. Whether the Gondol player will play it smart and sort of cut him off from retreat uh, towards the bridge here, which would be the smart thing to do because there's only one gate. And uh, obviously, as you can see, Cav is rushing across the bridge here. So they're probably in the hunt for that general. If they do get Dale's general, he could be in a bit of trouble. And yeah, Dale, I think, sense the danger of uh, going across and he's not going to do that at all. Uh, like I said, I think over on the various other sides, it seems like the defenders are doing very well. Dale is putting up a really strong defense. Still, they fight on here, they're fighting on very hard. But like I said, I still feel like they could do with a bit of a uh, archer spoil here. These crossbows could arc up onto the wall, just you know, kill off a couple of these tunnel guards. I mean, both sides are exhausted as well. I thought that these swordsmen would come through on top, but you never know with the tier two swords for the dwarves. Could be secretly very overpowered. But it's secretly well drilled. I mean, archers here against Iron Guard. It's like you want these Iron Guard to have huge kills. It's not wasting them. I know they're out of ammo, but still, don't waste them. Looks like we have one of the elites in here now. We do have Agaron Stonefist being sent in. And that's not a bad unit to send in to try and break through these Iron Guard. We'll see whether they uh, go down to combat, even or even maybe losing. They're still winning at the moment, uh, which is a great surprise. A lot of these choke points are being held on for quite a while here. Uh, it's 25, uh, sorry, it's um, 2200 against 1700. They closed the gap by like 100 kills of the defenders. 
progress, I guess. If they could kill a general on either side, that would obviously be huge for their cause. Mantra Claimant's in the shield wall, they'll, they'll, they'll be fine for a while. That's why that's when you need the Archer Iron to start shooting these guys in the side. Kill them off nice and easily. It looks like there is a capture point being captured here by Gondor. It's going to be converted from Dales to, uh, to Gondor's. I don't know if that's going to start a timer. It doesn't look like it is. The men have I think that's if they capture this other one here. Um, but yeah, that's at least going to help with morale for the attackers for a little while, which is you know, nothing to be sniffed at, that's for sure. Still cycle charging here is Gondor, which is incredible that Dale's put up with this. Really should have got us some archers to support or brought a spear or something. Just anything that's anti-cab to come in and deal with it. So that Prince Sergeant has been at being a pest. Can't have been good for, uh, for Dale. They really should have got more support. To find the good fight up here on the wall. Where they could have got archers on this wall as well. I protected it with swords. And then the used archers to sort of support the, uh, the shipment choke point down there. I don't know. Uh, men are breaking or wavering. Got the swords that have already been once, I think. And we've got some archers here that will start to break. It looks like uh, Gondor Archers, yeah. I mean, as soon as they arrive inside the city, you can focus on my crossbows. Still nothing has changed here as well. It's incredible. The tower has been destroyed. This bodes well. Fighting men of the white tree. Keep poking away with those halberds. Looks like finally the Iron Guard might be able to give up the ghost. That uh, shock imagery there, the Aglaron Stone Fist. It's only lost around about 25 dwarves, but they are starting to inflict a lot of kills on these Iron Guard who are down to about 25 dwarves themselves. Uh, but as you can see, not a lot for the attackers uh, over here battles. just at the moment. If they this were sending more infantry. Likely we'll just get focused down here by, uh, by the archers, but we'll see. I'm mean, going to see a charge from Imra Hill as well, which I think is why archers are setting up over here. And here they go. I'm going to go smash into these mansion flamers. There you go, a decent charge and yet to lose a rider. Did a bit of damage to those Manchester Clavers as well, killing a good 10 or so. Looks like we're about to see a lot of chaff going to maybe fight the, uh, the shipment here. They're going to get another charge in the face. I bet they were wishing they had jabbies. Uh, the sergeants kind of got stopped by their own troops there, so that's obviously a big win there. That's not going to do any great effect to the charge. There you go, yeah, Prince Sergeant. Hopefully, spent. We'll see, though. Uh, Erebor Axroy is going into melee to do those Agron Stone Fist. There isn't a lot of uh, infantry left, though. Soon it's going to be Dane on the front line. I think he's pretty much the last spare uh, sort of like axe infantry or any just sort of uh, melee infantry. Otherwise, archers with uh, a cross with no ammo also will have to uh, be going into con conflict, uh, being conscripted, as for sure. Uh, 1900 against uh, 1500. So again, the defenders closing that gap down to 400 men. Keep poking away. 
Imagine being a man of Gondor and you have to like eye up with these short ass dwarves. Because some other short ass dwarves didn't agree with them. Yeah, pay. You should be able to see at a, a good distances. Everyone's shorter than you. Stone fists are going to be broken here, but it does uh, look like it's going to cost the defenders that iron guards. And it looks like, I mean, I mean, you could be aggressive here with the shipment, maybe try and uh, get rid of these crossbows. It might be exactly what the uh, attackers want to try and use their cav. You try and be aggressive if you wanted to. I mean, um, you're going to have to deal with the, this threat sooner or later as well when there's shock, in, uh, sorry, these pole arms here and the swords come across. Uh, but Gondor, I mean, could easily be counted. They've got archers here, and yeah, it looks like they are going to start firing. I mean, he could probably. Uh, the Fountain Guard's already taking losses. We'll uh, see whether they go down 79, down to probably de less than 70. No, just 72. Uh, here, comes a bit, here comes a bit more of a volley. And actually, Gondor's pulling back the... Oh, okay, he's pulling back everything. That makes more sense. I thought he was going to pull back just the swords, leave the shock and there to die. No, he's pulled back everything, which is probably the smartest thing to do. Imrahil seems like he's dashing around. Might be going over to that sort of right flank there to try and help out uh, break through the shipment, I think. I think, uh, yeah, this is the plan is to try and batter their way through the Gondorian players. The shipment here, yeah, it's not a bad idea. I think they probably... Uh, I don't know if it actually did work, to be honest. I was thinking of coming around that corner, maybe that'll slow down the charge. It didn't seem to at all. Seems like uh, Gondor still went in with a fair amount of zip and vigor. Yeah, I think we're going to see yeah, Imre Hill come over to support this. I mean, by falling back here, they have opened up the uh, other street which these crossbows are on. And actually, look at that. Uh, it looks like the Erebor Axe Warriors are going to break, as is the Iron Guard nearly. And uh, the Aglaron Stone Fist, at three warriors left, are going to hold a just. And there's a, a fairly healthy Tunnel Guard coming forward. And yeah, uh, it looks like Erebor and Dale are going to have to retreat there on that flank. And these two units of swords is going to kind of get left here. Whether uh, they can start to focus down Imre Hill here in a moment, um, we'll see. But yeah, Imre Hill is going deep. He's going up to crossbows. I turned down around the Ravanian region. I don't know why he's not being committed yet to deal with Imre Hill. If they could get him uh, pinned down and also in melee, uh, this is a huge, huge win. I mean, yeah, the Ravanian region here needs, like, if I was the Erebor player, I'd be begging my daily allies to get over here and help out. Missile fire is coming in. There you go. Yeah, Imre Hill got a decent charge on crossbows. Did a decent amount of damage to him. He's going to get out of there. Yeah, it's a missed opportunity there for the defenders. We're now shooting Imre Hill as he runs. He's lost four riders. He's probably going to lose a few more. No, not really. The men are running. And that's it. I mean, again, look, he's still going around here. This is still asking for the Ravanian region to charge out. I mean, really, what do you, you don't need to defend this, uh, this bridge right now. Uh, if anything, just put Dane there, maybe. Or maybe just have the archers. But yeah, Imre Hill's, Imre Hill's for the taking. He really is. And the Ravalian region's doing nothing. I mean, Gondor's not got masses left. It seems like it is mainly Aglarond uh, left. You look like the blue. There's more blue markers, for sure, than uh, yellow markers. But still, the big win, if you get him, might even up the odds a little bit. It's 1,400 against about... Uh, it's nearly 1,300, really, for the uh, for the defenders. It's very close in numbers. Banspout is still with the attacks. I think that might be because of the cab. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they shouldn't really take this fight either, should the, uh, the defenders. They don't have to. They're just running into pole arms. It's not real. They've been doing it for a long time as well. But that's not helped with them. And yeah, look, you see Imre Hill, I think, was just going for hammer and anvils on his shipment here. Um, but yeah, he, he definitely the Ravanian region should have been able to go. Like, they, like the Imre Hill was here like with that routing uh, shipment is just now. He could have easily gone and got him. Imre Hill would have been isolated. 
Uh, Aglaron did lose on the wall, but it doesn't really matter because Dale's losing in the streets. So that unit's going to be stuck on the walls unless it's going to brave coming off and get run down by Imrahil. Um, so yeah, it looks like the left flank, uh, we fell enough, which was the side I thought was going to hold the, uh, the better of the two sides, as not the centre still holding. Uh, and yeah, the south, I think, is just actually now breaking out. Airball crossbows go in. Uh, we do have a shock injury here. Aglor and Stone Fisking focus down each uh, Yeah, they need to use these crossbows in overtime now just to try and focus on these Aglor and Stone Fist, try and kill them off. I mean, save some ammo maybe for the Founding Guards too. But yeah, definitely just try and take out their, as much of their shock infantry and their pole arms, just generally just their infantry as possible. Um, and then uh, all it leaves is missiles which uh, you can try them up a bit. To be fair, the defenders themselves don't have much more than missile infantry themselves. Um, marksmen are okay in a melee, but they won't be able to take a, a cab charge, that's for sure. Uh, again, the Ravani Rouge are going back to block it, and that seems to scare Gondor. Gondor, uh, I mean, actually, yeah, to be fair, if you kill Imrahil, all these Gondor troops here are kind of a bit in danger. But yeah, for some reason, Gondor doesn't like the idea of just coming across this bridge with that cab waiting at the other side. But yeah, I was going to say, if the pole arm just goes across first, that's... That's going to push back the Ravanian region easily. Another cap point here. It looks like it's about to be claimed uh, by the attackers. And it looks like the attackers have also stormed up here. Silencing these crossbows of Erebor. They've got like, have one volley left. They're winning at the crossbows in melee against Helm and Gas. There's a mounted unit. I guess maybe they can't do for a long melee. I don't know why they're a mounted unit at Helm and Gas. They really should not be. Dane's about to go in, I think, to try and maybe rectify that situation. And here we go, Imrahil is going in, he's charging all these Dalian archers. And to be fair, though he's got a good charge, he's not going to be able to break through these guys easily, by the looks of it. Yeah, they still need to be shooting him down. Seems like uh, they are shooting a bit in that direction, but yeah, not enough, in my opinion. They are gradually pushing their way across, and yeah, really, yeah, the Dalian marksman maybe one go uh, start shooting these guys or maybe just go all out on these fountain guard and kill them off first because then that uh, reviving region behind can charge these guys and yeah they're, they're falling back Gondor's just balks at the idea of trying to push across there it's, it's decided it's not worth it uh, Imre Hill's still getting focused down by the way and losing a fair amount of riders now but yeah they definitely should try it. I mean they can focus him down kill him they're looking good they're really looking good but I mean yeah Aglaron's doing a great job slowly just pushing up this hill and uh, now the airborne crossbows are losing against the helmet gas not sure why they were winning to start when they're now losing i mean they shouldn't be Dane ironfoot's in there he's about to uh, actually get sh uh, shot up by archers because the black veil archers gondor being kept in reserve which is a pretty good play by him he's gonna be able to use them to shoot uh, dane down if he wants to and yeah the center force is nearly broken here violent guards they still got 60 men but they're nearly spent I've Possibly try and pull them back to the final cap point the if possible. Are broken and are fleeing. Again, the uh, the general, uh, Ravanian regent. Where is he actually? Oh, he's gone in over here. He, he has gone in hard. And he actually broke Erebor. Not Erebor. It uh, looks like he's going to help try and break these Gondor swords. The, the pole arms? They already go. I think the pole arms have been focused down and killed. Which is huge in itself. And yeah, there you go. The Ravanian region is charging across the bridge. Getting good, good kills on the uh, Gondor swords there. Whether they can uh, then send the Gondor, uh, sorry, the Ravine regions into these Gondor archers, I don't know. Or elsewhere, it looks like Imre Hill's helmet to mop up the Vineland guards here. So he's going to open up that, that centre choke point. Of this unit now. Put more pressure on the final stand. Uh, numbers wise, it is 800 against uh, just under 800. It's about 700 against uh, 800. Again, Balance Power still with the attacks. They still have these Knights and Silver Swan to play with. I mean, Dan hasn't got a great charge there as the uh, Gondor play. He just charges back with his own swords. But it might be enough to help turn this uh, fight around. He's a healthy Knight Silver Swan against the Revivian region. If he has Brace, though, the general, he probably could still ease that fight out. And with Archer support as well, potentially. Dale's holding here for now, but only just. And the swords are actually getting off the wall that was trapped on the wall there, so that's good. And there you go, yeah, Daily Marksman have routed the uh, Gondor Archer there, but I think this might be the final uh, nail in the coffin in a moment. Imrahil riding up here. He's going to charge these crossbows, which are out of ammo. There you go, Gondor's nobility going smashing into Erebor's lines. 
Zimmer Hill yet. This is the best. I think that was Zimmer Hill. It might have been the officer, but it's a cool, had a cool uh, shield nonetheless. Dane now set up here. I mean, you could do Brace maybe as a shock infantry. Maybe I'm thinking of 12 12. Our men are breaking up. Archers, anyway, are still obviously a danger to, to Dane. He's just getting focused down by archers at any, any moment. It looks like, yeah, the Revining region maybe in prolonged melee against the swords. Uh, is starting to lose the edge and is starting to lose generally in that fight. And uh, yeah, I wonder whether it will be Kern. So I don't know why this Dalian sword's going along here. Maybe he's worried about being charged. I don't really know. Maybe he's going for the back lines here of the tunnel guards and the helmet gas. Uh, Imre Hill uh, is getting out of here. He's still getting shot at by uh, the marksman. It's unlikely he's going to die though. I think they've got to get him down to sort of like 20 or so riders if they even want to think about killing off Imre Hill. And even then, it might not be enough. You never know. And it certainly wouldn't be enough. There you go. General has died. Imre Hill has been killed off. Yeah, literally the 30th man he was to be, uh, like, be killed. Or like the 30th guy he left. So there you go. Gone on now without a gen. Is that going to change the battle and the uh, the fate of it? I don't know. I think it's a little late. If I came earlier, I think there was a chance. But yeah, these knights are sort of swarm there too elite to... Uh, could not carry on the fight. The Gondor swords as well. And they're not elite necessarily, but the holes, I'd imagine. 42 with two chevrons. A little longer. The Baron Guard can fight on a while. Dane is now getting stuck back in. Uh, Gimli yet to really uh, even see the action. He might not be even fighting against his, uh, his relative. I don't know if they are related to actually Dane and uh, Gimli. Possibly not. It might be, I'm not sure. There is Dane. Looks like Dane is losing here, but he the might take the aggro on Stone Fist with him. Don't know if he's going to take much more than that. It looks like, yeah, Imre Hill's now being thrown in recklessly because he's, well, no general. I don't think the marksman going to beat that Imre Hill uh, gen. It's incredible in itself. It seems like, uh, well, Dale's back to stabilizing and he's like, losing again. There you go. Enemy general general's dead. That is Dale's killed. general Excellent. gone. That might now be a mass route now for Dale or marksman. Look like they might be uh, all about, about a route there. These two are holding a little longer. Uh, but for how much longer, I don't know. And there you go, they're broken. This one might need to be sent in to try and hold back that, that front. Um, again, it looks like the Daily Marks would be thrown forward. A little bit too aggressive. I think they fall back. They're desperate to get this Imre Hill general for some reason. Do they not realize he's already dead? He's going to make an easy charge here for... Well, actually, that was not a charge at all there by Gondor. Yeah, Gondor, I don't know if he's going to necessarily get... He's not going to get a great charge. He might recharge in a second. Yeah, but I, I imagine I was going to say that he's going to, going to recharge and he's going to be able to then route these daily marks when I'd imagine. They're losing already. It doesn't help that they're yeah, impaling themselves on Founding Guard. But yeah, for some reason, the marksmen have just been super aggressive there. Maybe the daily player knows it's over. It does look like that is the case. Anyway, day nine foot has uh, pretty much broken. I don't know if he's actually dead. Uh, but it does look like Gimli is going to be the one to destroy his own kin. Destroy his home, Erebor. And uh, yeah, there you go. It looks like uh, Imrahil goes in again. Marksman are uh, actually, funnily enough, holding what Dale lasting longer than uh, Erebor is pretty incredible. But yeah, close battle. I mean, 500 men left for the attack it's against 200 it was very very close certainly think a little bit too much uh, throwing away of infantry into pole arms and they didn't send in their own pole arms or because they didn't have any um and maybe uh, maybe should have focused down cav a little bit more and possibly defending the walls i don't know i feel like trying to defend the streets and this was always a tough one i mean they nearly did it with the Our numbers that are left the field but um archers i feel like always like get uh, good angles maybe depending on the walls uh, it makes it a bit more difficult yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough map to defend, that's for sure, um, uh, is an Uno on that. I, I would say it's not the easiest of maps. But uh, yeah, maybe a few things can be done differently, maybe ever so slightly. Maybe if they just saved men from being impaled on pole arms, that might have been enough. Because like I said, there's only like 500 attackers left. And uh, that is all it was between the two. A, a period victory, that's for sure. 
for uh, the two attackers there. This is from famous Austrian's perspective as Gondor. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, man, uh, for this replay. Um, he got 237 kills with his uh, Imra Hill general here. I mean, 108 with the Gondor swords, 175 with another one here. His uh, pole arms, 101 kills, 179 with the Fowling Guards. And then his archers, 98 kills. His Black Reveal archers uh, getting decent kills. And then also his Prince of Sergeants kept doing those, all those psych charges, getting 113 kills. And only 62 actually with the Knights of the Silver Swan, but I think they were killing uh, like a whole bunch of uh, the uh, Revanian region general. Then we have King Madman, uh, 123 as Aglarond. Um, playing as uh, the Agla, well, playing as Agla yeah. I mean, you look at I and Kin, 20, 42 kills. Oh, what a waste of these units. I mean, I imagine they were focused down and killed. Uh, Dwarven River Wards, um, getting 102 kills here, 147 kills with the Agla on Stonefist, 117 with this one here. His uh, Tunnel Guards, 127 kills, and his uh, Helming Gas and his Crosswords did most of the work. It felt like 118, 135, 193 with the Helming Gas, and 123 with this Helming Gas there. Yeah, those archers really unlocking uh, sort of a lot of choke points for the infantry and making uh, the assault a little bit easier, a bit more bearable. Daredevil playing as Dale, 114 kills as Revining Regent General. Uh, his shipment, 173 kills, 110. His uh, Dalian Swords, the slightly better swords, 159 kills, 127. 191 there with the Violent Guards. Pretty poor showing for those elite swords there. Then the uh, Archers, the Daily Marks, 120, uh, 122, 110, 149. These guys kind of, at the end of the game, using up their ammo, got some decent kills. And we have uh, 14 Rook playing as Erebor. Had a tiny army in comparison to most uh, most of the other players. Uh, no wonder he kind of got overwhelmed uh, a little bit and certainly had, you know, very small amount of troops, very elite troops, Iron Guards and Mansion Reclaimers and Erebor Axe Warriors. They got good kills, though. Credit to them. Well, most of them did. 108 kills a day, nine foot. I mean, I think getting folks down and killed. Mansion Reclaimers, 153 kills. Uh, one of his Erebor Axe Warriors got 187. The other two, not that great, to be honest, like sub-100. Uh, Iron Guards 408 with one of them which shows how great they can be one got 44 kills though which is sad to see and then another Iron Guard 148 kills which is okay but it's great uh, Erebor Crossbows 234 kills 187 227 153 again I think getting a lot of side shots and being able to arc yeah, really helped uh, in some of those choke points, that's for sure. But there you go, guys. That is today's Dawn of Stay Siege. If you enjoy checking this one out, do remember to leave a like, subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell, join the Discord if you want to get involved in Dawn of Stay's chaos, and do check out some of the videos appearing on your screen. We've got some glorious ones there, but until next time, I'll see you in the next one.